here in just a second. Um, for those of that don't know me, I'm Alex Yurick. I'm the lead mentor for 4607. Um, this is our sixth uh, year of Jumpstart. This is the second year that uh, Medtronic has been our main sponsor. Um, just want to welcome everybody in. Uh, we're going to go through a few minutes of trivia. Um, it's going to cover a lot of different aspects here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about St. Cloud State because they were our original partners, still our partners, they're a host for today. Um, St. Cloud State has been incredible for us uh, since the beginning, and we will share some information on what they've done so far. And then we have the Central Minnesota Robotics Hub. And Jumpstart and the Central Minnesota Robotics Hub actually started uh, at the same meeting in Buffalo, Minnesota, uh, back in September of 2015. Um, we met, there were six teams that met there, and you see the six stars on our logo um, that met to kind of figure out how we're going to better prepare our teams for competition. Um, and from that, uh, we had previously had a meeting with St. Cloud State, so uh, we had introduced it to the teams there. And we asked them if they'd be interested in, you know, this, this collection of sessions that we didn't know what they were called. We we're actually going to call it the Art of Robotics Training. So it would have been state of the art and everybody poo-pooed that. So we ended up with Jumpstart instead, which I think ended up serving us a lot better in the long run. Um, again, we do have the Jumpstart uh, Training Initiative or Jumpstart Robotics Training. Um, and there's a, a handful of people that are really working hard behind the scenes and have been working hard behind the scenes for a while. Um, Corey. Todd, Shar, Matea, myself. Uh, last year we had Steve, or sorry, Scott, um, Katie, uh, and a few others, Heather, um, that really pushed this thing to where it's at now. Um, so there are a number of people that are working behind the scene diligently every year. And I do want to talk about that a little bit later um, about what Jumpstart's going to look like post COVID. Uh, we do have a lot of plans on what this thing's going to turn into. Um, and these last few sessions or these last few events have really played a part in that. So um, the Minnesota Robotics Coaches Association um, is part of the Minnesota State High School Coaches Association. And one of the requirements is to have at least one dedicated uh, clinic for the coaches. So we adopted Jumpstart or the MRC, MRCA adopted Jumpstart as uh, St. Cloud State as its official uh, training event, which makes sense because we have so many people there, so many coaches there. Uh, it was easy to turn that into what it is. And then, of course, Delta Mod Tech uh, has jumped on as a sponsor. Actually, they were the ones that put up the initial capital for this to turn into initiative. Uh, they're the ones that allowed us to create the website, get our 501c3 in order. Um, yeah, so without Delta Mod Tech uh, kind of... Um, piggy banking this thing for us last year, uh, it, it doesn't turn into what it is today. So Todd, do you have the um, chat going so that way we can keep up with that? Perfect. I got Todd moderating it for me as well as a handful of people from uh, Medtronic that are also keeping me in line. So if there's any questions, please feel free to jump in and ask them. Um, if you have any comments or anything else, uh, please again, uh, jump in and then one of the moderators will just excuse me and uh, we'll get going from there. So here we go. We have, oh shoot, I almost forgot about this one, sorry. Um, this is the big one. Uh, and I have to tell the story because it, it's, a, it's a great story. Um, well, maybe not for you guys, but for me it is. I got to a point um, where earlier this summer, we realized that doing Jumpstart in COVID era was gonna be darn near impossible, especially in the way that uh, it had been set up um, in person live, right? And so when we got to August, late August, um, Todd had reached out to me and said, hey, Medtronic's still looking at what we're gonna be doing for Jumpstart. And I said, you know, it's, let's just let it ride this year. Um, things just aren't going well uh, with COVID. And honestly, I was in a spot in my life where I didn't feel like I could do robotics just because, you know, it, with COVID and everything else, it was, it was tough. Um, so Medtronic <laughs> jump-started jumpstart again and got it back up and going. Um, they've really packaged this up the way it is now. Uh, they put all of their support behind uh, jumpstart. 
they're the ones that um, obviously didn't create Zoom, but they, uh, they're allowing us to use their whole Zoom suite. And yeah, without Medtronic, without the vision that Shar had, without the heavy work that uh, Matea has been doing, uh, this doesn't happen today or on 11-14 or on Halloween. So thank you so much to Medtronic. Um, this has been a great partnership so far for us. We've appreciated everything you've done so far. So round of applause for them. And then we get to our trivia time. So we've got a number of, of entities that have been really uh, been influential in uh, what uh, Jumpstart has turned into. Um, and we're gonna kind of highlight a few of these, obviously St. Cloud State University, you see them all along the, the bottom of the, the uh, slideshow there, as well as Medtronic at the top. But again, we're gonna hit, uh, since this is St. Cloud State's hosting this one, uh, we're gonna hit St. Cloud State. We're gonna talk a little bit about Jumpstart itself and how uh, we started this thing. Um, there's a lot to the story. Um, there's a lot of background to it that, a lot of failures, uh, really. Um, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Robotics Coaches Association a little bit and uh, how they play into this. And in fact, we're going to have the new executive director from the Minnesota State High School Coaches Association joining us in a little bit. Um, and he's going to introduce himself and um, just kind of lay out what he's looking forward to in the next few years. So, And then we have the Central Minnesota Robotics Hub, and it's a very long uh, yes. We might want to shorten it down a little bit here in the, in, uh, the future, but for us right now, it's CMNRH is the, the hub that we belong to uh, here in central Minnesota. So, so here we go. Um, I mentioned this earlier, uh, not too long ago. So when was Jumpstart first founded? Uh, we have 2013, 2015, 2017, or 2019. Um, and I'll tell you this little hint, it wasn't the same year that 4607 had its first regionals. So you can cross out one of those immediately. Um, Medtronic joined us as our partner in another one of those years, uh, but that wasn't the year we founded. So as we go through this, are we getting people lo loaded up here? No one, huh? Come on. 2013, maybe? Ooh, it's Tom Matea, is that 2015? <laughs> all right so nobody guessed 2013 nice job oh 2017's off last year medtronic joined us in 2015 uh so jump here ahead uh, i can't go to that one um 2015 were founded and there's a lot to the story about what happened um 4607 had just in the 4607 is a team out of becker becker minnesota um, we just had two very good years in 2013 and 14, which saw us get to the state tournament. In 2013, we won the state tournament. In 2014, we captained our alliance uh, to finalists that year, getting beat out by Nightcrawler and Stormbots and Fighting Calculators. And then 2015, <laughs> we showed up to uh, the competition with what we believe to be probably one of the largest robots in FRC history when we unfailed it or unfurled it on the field. Uh, it ended up being nine feet long. It took us just under five minutes, and that's all the time we got to set it up on the field. And then the thing didn't turn on for eight out of the 10 matches. It sat and blinked. And about halfway through the Friday, I walked over to our pit and we had every CSA, not only from North Star, but also from uh, 10,000 Lakes in our pit trying to figure out what was going on. Um, the last two matches, it did work. Uh, not great. Um, we deemed ourselves the best ro uh, best defensive robot of the year in a game that you're not supposed to play defense. Um, our teammates, our alliance partners, would ask us just to sit up against the wall, <laughs> stay out of the way. It was it was an utter failure. But what happened with my team during that time was the, the fans in the stands realized, hey, there's something going on here. We know that we're, we're trying to fix it in the pit but yet it's just not happening. Uh, we didn't have a lot of connections everywhere with a lot of the teams. Um, so we're, we felt like we were just struggling by ourselves. And then the team, uh, the, the fans of the stand decided to adopt other teams and start cheering for them. Other teams that were doing as well, just like us, uh, teams that were newcomers. Um, I believe it was 5576 Spirit Lake, Iowa, uh, the Terminators, I think, but it, I could be wrong on that one. Um, we adopted them and we were just going crazy every time they came out. Well, by the time everything ended, obviously we didn't get selected uh, for alliance uh, for an alliance partner or anything else. 
Um, we licked our wounds. Uh, we were awarded the uh, Team Spirit Award, which we hung in our, our shop with pride because we knew what happened. Um, we good? Okay. So we get back to our uh, school and we have a leadership meeting. And we're like, what just happened? How do we avoid this again in the future? Because we had uh, students that started with the team in 2013 and had been through all the success. And also 2015, we fall flat on our face. Um, so we sat and we, we really started looking at everything. One of the things that my captain said at the time, she's like, we don't have anybody to lean on. We have nobody in our area to go and ask questions or to push us or just to be there for us. Uh, we need to start building the hub. Well, we didn't know it was the hub at that time, but we need to start building up teams in our area. Um, and so we started looking at that. We started working with other schools, reaching out. And then we went to another training session down in Minneapolis. And again, Emma, my captain said, you know what? We could do this in central Minnesota. We could do this at St. Cloud State. So that's how it all came about. Um, I'll go into more detail about it. I know I can talk forever on this stuff, but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. So I'm going to turn my attention to St. Cloud State since we just kind of ended off with them. I'm going to segue to them. And St. Cloud State University just celebrated their blank anniversary in 2019. It's a big one. Um, for a school or any organization to be around for a few years as they have uh, is quite an accomplishment. So here we go. Did they celebrate their 75th, their 100th, their 125th, or their 150th anniversary in 2019? Ooh, we got a few people, 100, 125. I'm loving this annotation here, this is great. So St. Cloud State is my alma mater. Uh, I graduated from there with a Bachelor of Science in and Bachelor of Science in Technology Education. Um, and at that time, that was a while ago. But yeah, it's not the 75th. A lot of hundreds. It's not the 125th. It's actually founded way back when. Uh, 150th anniversary is founded in 1869. Um, and in fact, I got some cool little notes here. Uh, it was a third state normal school. And for people that are like, what the heck's a normal school? Normal school is really uh, set up for teachers to educate teachers and get them out as fast as they can out of the plains and prairies and the forests of Minnesota. They had five faculty members, which I believe the Department of ETS and Barbara Technological Studies has more than that today. And that's one of their smaller ones. Um, St. Cloud State has had numerous national championship teams. What was their last one? So they've always had really good hockey teams, even when I was there. Um, one of the most exciting things to do was on Friday, Saturday night, uh, head down to uh, the National Hockey Center, as it was called at that time, and uh, go watch a game. The best matches, the best games were when they had the road splits between um, Gophers and St. Cloud State Huskies. And I can tell you exactly some of the traditions that happened at those games, because probably not appropriate anymore, but what they would do is Friday night, you'd have the game at St. Cloud State, and then Saturday night, the game would go to uh, Gophers, um, Mary Arena. So you had these cool, this cool setup where you could travel the 50, well, 60 miles and see both the games. So, And then the uh, wrestling has come about in the last number of years, let's say the last 15 years. They've had a very strong wrestling program, and they've had a, a traditionally a very strong women's basketball. So their last national championship, I give you more than enough time to Google this, is what? Nobody's even circling. I, you know, as a teacher, I've given you hints. I give you hints on all of these uh, trivias. Yeah, see, people are starting to catch on to uh, some of the hints that teachers give. Um, <laughs> it's not the basketball team of 2019. Um, men's hockey, sadly, men's hockey has not won a national championship. As mind-blowing as it is to me, because they've been so good for so long, uh, it was actually, oh, that jumped off twice. That was cool. Um, yeah, 2018 wrestling uh, was their last time, uh, the last state or, or team championship. And then they also won in 2016. Um, and their first national championship for wrestling was in 2015. So it's really cool if you go into uh, Hallenbeck and you see how successful this program has been over the last few years. Um, again, if you're not into wrestling, I get it, but as a, that being my alma mater and a former wrestling coach, 
uh, I take great pride in knowing that that's still a successful program there. So, all right, St. Cloud State University offers over how many? Can we clear this annotation here? There we go. There we go. St. Cloud State offers over how many programs of study? So I'm using very similar numbers as before because that's always fun for me. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm a, as a teacher, I've always kind of leave these little hints. Um, but this one, I don't know if there's a hint there uh, or you can't even hearken back to the last question that had those similar numbers. But St. Cloud State University offers over how many programs of study? Now this includes um, certificates, this includes uh, undergrad, bachelor's of science, bachelor's of arts. This includes uh, graduate studies. We got a few of them. And if you've ever been to St. Cloud State, I, the one thing I love about it, and I think a lot of our campuses uh, uh, here in Minnesota, it's right on the river, right on the Mississippi River. Uh, if you go to the Beaver Island Trails, there's actually now, um, I don't know if we can talk about this, but there's a brewery that's named after the Beaver Island uh, area. Um, an absolutely gorgeous place to, to go hike and everything else. So 75 uh, is not the correct answer. Um, down to 100 or 200, your last moments. Oh, geez, that one jumped that fast. Yep, so it's 200 programs of study at St. Cloud State. Uh, when I went to school there, um, <laughs> almost 20 years ago, uh, there was over 17,000 students on campus. Um, just undergrad, and there was another uh, 2,000 or so uh, graduates. So there's a lot of stuff going on there um, with St. Cloud State. So here we go. You want to clean off that annotations again there. So going to give a little bit of a hint that organization's on the uh, screen right now. So what organization is the main driver for Jumpstart training events? Um, and I hinted about it when we first started talking here uh, at the beginning. Um, <laughs> I better click them up here. There you go. St. Cloud State, Central Minnesota Robotics Hub, MRCA. Matea's on this. Delta Mod Tech. If you had been listening, uh, we did discuss this. Like I said, as a teacher, uh, every time that I give a quiz in the class, I usually have um, some talking points that I'll go through before I give the quiz. And those talking points whether the students realize it or not, um, <laughs> directly relate to the quiz they're about to take. So, yeah, I like that. Um, I don't get a lot of shout outs or pause up at all. So that's pretty cool. Thank you so much. I, there was another one that I might get to in a little bit uh, that also has to deal with uh, St. Cloud State if we have some time, but it's not on here. So. Which one is it? St. Cloud State, Central Minnesota Robotics Hub, the Minnesota Robotics Coaches Association, or Delta Mod Tech? Well, St. Cloud State was our first partner and our first host, and they still are. Uh, they've done an awesome job. The MRCA uh, is not really a partner, but works with us on this training event. It's the Central Minnesota Robotics Hub that, both, again, as I said earlier, both of these things started at the same time. We had, if you look at our uh, little logo there, there's seven stars, one of them to indicate right in the middle. Um, Sorry, one that just jumped off. <laughs> right in the middle uh, to designate that that's where we're from, Central Minnesota. Uh, and then there's the other six stars that designates the six teams that started with us that first year in 2015 as we started Jumpstart. So um, Jumpstart has been organized by the Central Minnesota Robotics Hub since its inception in 2015. In fact, the entire premise to start Jumpstart was literally, I told you this about my Captain Emma before, was to help the local teams grow. And we Thought we were going to start off with uh, about five teams that first year, maybe 10 if, you know, we were really lucky. Um, <laughs> and then as we started to put the information out, we got overwhelmed. Um, the cool thing about all of this is when we approached St. Cloud State, Ryan Swanson and myself approached St. Cloud State uh, in that August, um, they were adamant that this, is, this happens. Uh, it happens in 2015. It's going to happen on their campus, and they're going to do everything they can in their power to help it happen. But they had one caveat. They uh, they said that we're not going to allow we allowed to um, charge any registration fees, <laughs> which was a gut punch because we knew that we were going to have about 100 kids, you know, a few mentors, so 150 people on campus. How are we going to feed them if we can't charge 
any registration. We'll say Cloud State has said flat out, we're going to take care of all the food and uh, breakfast in the morning. And they, they did. The problem was I had to go back in early November of 2015 to St. Cloud State and say, uh, we have over 20 teams registered for our first event. We're expecting five. Um, that first year we had 280 people attend Jumpstart um, from all across Minnesota. Uh, Cass Lake was one of the first ones that signed on. I think I saw Jesse on here earlier. Um, we had teams coming in, ESCO 5690 coming in. Um, it really just organically grew uh, to a point where Every year we added more and more teams to the point where last year at St. Cloud State, uh, we had just over a thousand attendees for Jumpstart. And then we also had the FTC um, League event for the Vermilion League up there. And that brought in just under 300 people. So we're pushing that uh, 13, 1400 people at St. Cloud State last year, which is pretty cool. Um, here's one, now I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the, the, the teams that have jumped in to Jumpstart. Uh, how many Jumpstart teams have qualified for champs? Some people call it uh, nationals, which is a no-go, correct? Um, otherwise, it's also known as worlds. Uh, but collectively, uh, or colloquially, it's, it's typically it's called champs. Um, five, six, nine, 12, or 32. How many? Yeah, we track all of these. For every team that registers for Jumpstart, we track you. It's really weird. We've been tracking you since 2015, uh, how the teams have done, um, what awards they've won at the different competitions. Um, yeah, and it's it's all out there. Uh, I have it. If you ever join my um, charting success through the awards um, uh, session, I go through this quite heavily, just showing what happens. So Yep, not five. Again, this is this has been around for a while, so uh, you're going to expect these numbers to creep up a little bit. And I'm going to show you in just a second the different teams and how they've gotten there, which is pretty cool. Uh, like I said, we do track everybody. Um, I can't imagine on our end the way we track. <laughs> we have that Google tracks us. Yeah, just saying. Um, since its inception, 32 teams have attended Jumpstart that have attended Jumpstart have qualified for champs and I'm not taking any credit or Jumpstart's not taking any credit for them getting there. Uh, it's just interesting to see the teams and how they ended up um, getting there. So here is the different teams, the different uh, uh, awards the teams have won. So five of them, this one, this one surprised me, only five qualified by wildcard. I thought for sure it'd be more than that. I thought that was going to be one of the, the more heavier ones. We have 56, 90, 32, 93. Uh, 3244, the Stone, no, sorry, uh, Ricori, and then Dasco Cato. And then congratulations to um, the Robets. I didn't realize they had two EIs. Whenever I think EI or engineering inspiration, I always think 2502, just because they seem to hit that thing every single year. But um, in two years, uh, along with attending Jumpstart, uh, the Robets have qualified with EI. We've had five rookie all star teams, uh, Todd's 7068. Pequot Lakes, uh, St. Michael Albertville, 7028, 7530, Jeremy Vasquez's team out of uh, Watertown Mayor, and then 7432 out of Loretto, Minnesota. So five rookie all-star teams. And there's a bunch of them that won rookie inspiration, but these are the ones that get you to world. So they're champs. Uh, nine chairman's awards. Uh, and actually, this is a little bit of a misnomer because there's actually 10 chairman's awards, but one of them is a Hall of Fame award. Uh, 1816 has won this award at the regional level to get to champs um, three times. And then last year in 2019, again, congratulations to 1816, winning Hall of Fame. Uh, my own team 4607 has won it four times. Uh, Alexandria won it down, I believe at North Star, uh, or was it Great Northern? Um, and then 2177 won it at North Star a couple years ago. And then we had 10 winners. And this is what I love to see. Uh, these are all teams that when we think of typical powerhouses in Minnesota, these aren't necessarily the teams that uh, come up right away. Um, 3102 has won it two times. They've actually won more than that. Uh, this is just since they started working with Jumpstart. Um, Eden Valley Watkins has won it twice, and they also won state back in 2018 with 5172 and 4539. And then ESCO, as you see, they qualified by wild card up on top. They've also qualified by winning Iowa. And I'm sorry, Justin, I can't remember what the other one was. I think it was Lake Superior. Yeah, Lake Superior. Okay. Um, and then 4539, um, they've actually won a few times, uh, not just twice getting there, but those are two that qualified for them. Um, 
Yeah. And then 59-13, Pequot Lakes has won it. Actually, they, they ended up beating 46-07 out, sadly, that year and ended up winning it with 2052 uh, to go on. And then last year, um, Delano, 30-26, again, knocked my team off to go to Worlds. Um, so, yeah, so those are your past winners there. Yeah, we're right at nine. So how many jump starts this time? I'm going to finish up with this one and then I'm going to introduce or, or welcome everybody. Um, how many jump start sessions have been given since 2015? This does not include jump start for mentors. It doesn't include any of our FTC events or any of our FLL jump start events, which didn't happen this year uh, because of just transitioning into this format for FRC. Um, and the fact that it's really difficult to work with anything right now in COVID times. So not including Jumpstart for Mentors, FTC or FLL, how many Jumpstart sessions have been given since 2015? You got 157, 252, over 300, 270 or 192. So go ahead and start circling those up and taking a look at it. Um, again, this is, we're talking five years of Jumpstart. Um, we're now at NDSU, St. Cloud State. Uh, many, many. We started partnering with Prior Lake last year and have worked with their um, training sessions there. So, holy smoke, someone's going to rabbit on 300. Um, geez, I just jumped over it. Well, there you go. It's 270. We can click through these now. Um, 270. But those of you that guessed over 300, uh, you're kind of right as well. Since 2015, 270 sessions have been given at the FRC Jumpstarts, SCSU, NDSU, Medtronic, and many, many. And if all the sessions are included from FLL, FTC, FRC, and our uh, mentor Jumpstarts, or Jumpstart for Mentors, that number climbs to 317. So for those of you that did answer over 300, you, I'll give you partial credit for that. And then from there, we're going to end because it's actually already 901. But if you want to know how many FRC teams there are in Central Minnesota Robotics Hub, uh, there is 23 of us. Um, we just added a new one. So welcome, Legacy Christian Academy, 8516. They're a brand new rookie team this year. They still have that new rookie smell. So if you are able to get a hold of them or talk to them, uh, welcome them into the FRC community. So there we go. All right, Todd, how do I flip this over to just me then? Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. So, done with trivia. We got our video going. All right, here we go. We're done with trivia. Uh, I do want to welcome everybody to Jumpstart, uh, St. Cloud State Jumpstart. Um, this is the sixth time that Jumpstart is being hosted by St. Cloud State. Um, we do welcome everybody. We got a lot of different people here from uh, not just Minnesota, um, but we are branching out. We do have Andy Baker here from Andy Mark, uh, all the way from in, uh, Kalamazoo, no, Kokomo, Indiana. Um, he's coming in to showcase some of his products, which is awesome. Uh, we have a bunch of our uh, first upper Midwest board members here that are going to be working with uh, how do we set up or how do we better define um, how to train new mentors. Uh, that'll be in our third round. Um, Todd is obviously here working with his electronics. Corey is going to be running something that we call Glowworm. There we go. So it's, it's effectively taking or challenging limelight and how it works. So we do have a lot of good sessions today. Um, in a couple minutes, you're going to hear from uh, our new executive director. Uh, for the Minnesota State High School Coaches Association. Uh, we're going to welcome him in in just a bit here. Uh, and he's just going to go ahead and, and introduce what his vision is for the next number of years. So we do have all that. Uh, as you're going through this, and I know Matea is going to talk about it in a little bit, um, please be respectful to the uh, presenters. If you have questions, um, I'm not sure does Zoom have the raise the hand. I know that our Google Meets did. Um, but it put it in the chat, but oh, they do. Okay. So put it in the chat. Uh, every single room that we have is the has moderators, um, specifically from Medtronic, but also some of the rooms have moderators that are set up by the, the presenters, um, that are presenting during that session. So, uh, if you have a question, uh, ask it in the chat. And if it doesn't get it answered at that point before the end of it, um, feel free to contact or connect with that presenter and see what, uh, what they can help you with. So 
Uh, do we have Rick on right now? Is Rick available for us? Yes, I'm here. Oh, perfect. All right. So Rick, there you are. Nice to see you, sir. Uh, Rick is joining us from Lakeville, correct? That is correct. All right. And Rick is the new Minnesota High School Coaches Association Executive Director. So welcome, Rick. Uh, you've got a friendly audience waiting for you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. I'd like to congratulate your association for being able to pull this event together. Alex, I know, has worked hard and Becky Lure has worked hard to get the robotics coaches as part of the Coaches Association. Um, my name is Rick Ringeisen. I'm from Lakeville and I'm a 40 year three season coach and uh, I'm still coaching. I gave up my fall position, but I'm still coaching boys swimming in the winter and track in the spring. And I think it's just fabulous, all the opportunities that you're able to provide for kids. I've had a number of kids that have been a part of the robotics team for years and they have great passion for what they do. And I know you have great passion. 2020 has been a very challenging year. Um, I think I've heard the word COVID um, too many times in my life, and I'm sure you have. Um, I know I've heard the line that I want to compete like it's 2019 and I'm zoomed out, but here we are. We're zooming again today. Um, joining the association, I'd like to put in a kick for that, and it's really important that you do because the liability insurance is super important to protect you, your family. It's there if something happens for your athletes. It's not very expensive. You would never dream of driving your car or leaving your home uninsured. And you shouldn't leave yourself uninsured when you, when you start working with students. There's just too many things that can go wrong in the world today. And that protection makes a big difference for you and for them. Uh, being a member allows and qualifies you for your postseason awards. It allows you for the Coach of the Year Award, Championship Coach Award, uh, Distinguished Service Assistant Coach of the Year, and eventually to be eligible for the Hall of Fame which is pretty important for all those things. Not only should you be a member, but your staff should be members as well of the association for the liability to protect them. You don't want them hanging out there. The other thing that does is that you get an aggregate amount. The liability insurance is $2 million, $1 million per occurrence. But if your assistant is a, a, a member, then you, you can aggregate that and you can go to $4 million in protection for any, for, and that'd be 2 million per event and 4 million total based on the number of assistants. You can multiply that for those kinds of things. Um, the association is working hard for you. And I know that everybody realizes that COVID is not making things easier. Everybody's had to put in more time and more effort. But for example, we put together the parents, the parents playbook with the State High School League and the Athletic Directors Association. If you know of a coach who's in peril or having problems or facing some challenge in their life, you can nominate a coach for Coaches Caring. You can just reach out to me. They'll get a letter of support from the Coaches Association, and they'll also receive a $100 check to kind of help them through that time of adversity. Uh, we've issued more than 40 checks to coaches over the last five years, and all of them have been greatly appreciated to know um, when they're having this, this time of adversity in their life. Um, it's really important that you realize that the Coaches Association was instrumental in passing the coaches statutes that allow you to have some protection in your job if you've been released from your position or non-renewed to have a contract and have the reasons why you've been released in writing. Uh, we've had some unique legal situations that we've been involved in. Uh, we had a coach who was slandered and released from his job, falsely accused. And as a result, um, he turned around, he lost his coaching. He's been, hasn't coached for seven years. So he tried to sue the mother who falsely accused him of things. They actually accused him of um, assault and the police investigated and turned up that there was absolutely no, no basis whatsoever to it. So, um, and he of course defamed him and to all of the other parents in the district and the district, you know, you're, they let people go before they, they really find out if what happened the person is accusing them of what really happened. Um, the lower court judge said that, I'm sorry, sir, but you may not uh, pursue your, your suit against this person for slander because you're a public figure. He appealed it. We helped him appeal it to the appellate court. The appellate court agreed with the lower court. We appealed it again all the way to the, to the state Supreme Court, in which case they said, no, you're, you're a high school coach. You're not a public figure. You may sue. Well, now that person's 
filed bankruptcy to avoid this judgment. So he has to go to bankruptcy court to have that not released. And it's, it's been a seven year march. It's pretty tough. Uh, last year we had in the spring when all the seasons got canceled, the coaches association put together a list of reasons of why coaches should be compensated uh, for the time they put in because several districts weren't going to pay over 80% of the districts in the state did do that. Um, we also had a, a a letter writing campaign to the legislature last spring that was very successful. Uh, we, we sent that out early in the morning and by 11 o'clock, the legislator contacted me and said, please turn it off. <laughs> Too many people, we, we get the message, we know you're important. In addition to that, we had a district fire all their spring coaches last year, so they didn't have to be paid. Uh, we, we were able to step in and, and resolve that for them. And again, with this fall, we had a district issue new contracts that made every coach sign a contract saying that they didn't have the rights guaranteed in the state statutes of a hearing and the reasons why they were released in, in writing. And uh, we spent about a week on that in between our attorney and the education association. Uh, they wrote back and said, well, we are going to um, shred all of those contracts and issue notices of assignments. So the coaches association is working hard for you to ensure that you have your rights and that you can do the best possible job working with your, with your student athletes. So if you have any, there's lots of other benefits to being a member of the association, check out our website. It's mshsca.org. Uh, you have your own webpage link there as well. If you ever have any questions or concerns about the Coaches Association, you can contact me. My contact information is there. But the easy one to remember is uh, I'm ringer at mshsca.org. And that's my email. It was a pleasure being here today. I, I sure hope you have a fabulous season. We get the vaccine on board. And I, I know how tough it is out there. My wife's a hospital nurse and uh, they're really tough on, they're really tough on staff. Um, the base membership, I see it in the chat, is $35 to join the parent organization. And then whatever the additional sums your association charges, uh, generally that's that's in the neighborhood of $10. Uh, some associations are more. But that money goes back directly to your association to do your awards and to help set up your clinics and do those kind of things. So all of the money is being used for good, for good reasons and good purposes. So it's not... It's not expensive to be a member of the coach association. Plus you get the prep coach and you get to keep up on what's going on in all other sports that are being hosted by the state high school league. Does anybody else have any questions? If not, I want to, I know you have a lot of really fun stuff to talk about today. It's Saturday morning. So obviously you have great passion um, because you're not with your kids or are off doing other things because it's a beautiful day. We don't get many days like this in December. So I wish you all a happy holiday and uh, a great season for you and your student athletes. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate all you do. Thank you, Medtronics. It's fabulous. You have such a great sponsor for your events. Thank Better you so much, Rick. Here. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, thank you so much to Rick. Um, he was very excited to get on today and uh, just meet everybody. To, uh, he wanted to do it in person, obviously, but uh, maybe next year. So um, moving forward with this, uh, we're going to introduce Matea, correct? Um, and oops, there goes Rick. And we're going to go through a little bit of uh, more jump start and how to jump start today. So here we go. All right, I'll share my screen. And before I get started, I do actually want to give Michelle just a quick minute to plug an upcoming alumni event that I have on the information here. You can scan this QR code if you're interested in registering, but go ahead, Michelle. Hello, everyone. Thanks um, for... Oh, oh, Michelle, Michelle. you're muted. Yep. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. <laughs> 
So I put the registration link in the chat as well, so you can uh, pull that up, but you can also take a picture of the little scan here for registration. So this is our second annual alumni event. So we started this last year in January, and we're even though we're all virtual, we're still going to do this again uh, in January 7th of this year. Um, and we're also still planning our next one. So this one's going to be a very casual event, just kind of get together. We're going to have some fun games. Um, it'll be a Zoom session and there'll be breakout rooms with different games in them. Um, mostly it's just kind of a way to connect and just keep the event going uh, during COVID. And then next year we're going to be doing more planning with our sponsors, um, talking about recruiting and uh, what options there are for continuing with FIRST while you're still going to college, as well as opportunities once you leave college to stay connected with FIRST or maybe reach out to sponsors for things like internships. So please come to our event. We do ask for registration so we know how many people are going to be there. Um, the We're you will see the name FARV, which stands for First Alumni Reconnect. And uh, like I said, I put the registration in the chat and I hope you guys will consider coming. And oh, the one thing I wanted to mention is this is also open. It's to any FIRST alumni and we consider FLL alumni for this casual event. Um, but also we are inviting uh, high school seniors. So we're gonna post this on to Jumpstart. So coaches, if you could take this um, and share it with your alumni, but also your high school seniors, uh, they are all invited to attend. Thanks, Matea. Sure thing, thank you, Michelle. All right, and a quick thank you again to Todd, Alex, St. Cloud State, Delta Mod Tech. This has been a really great three-part jumpstart this year. I'm so grateful that I get to be with you this morning and that everything has gone pretty smoothly, I would say, for a virtual event. Um, thank you so much for everyone that's been involved. Some quick reminders when you get into your breakout sessions. Um, we do want everyone to mute during the presentation so there's no background noise, but unmute yourself for that Q&A session. Um, it's good to hear both the question and the answer. And also, it, um, the videos, it says as bandwidth allows, but our attendee number today definitely is going to allow for your video. So even though it's recorded and it might not be comfortable, um, really consider turning your camera on today. Some reminders from last time, you're probably all familiar with Woody Flowers, his gracious, gracious professionalism. Just remember to respect the Zoom, respect the presenters, respect yourself, and just make the most of your time today. And speaking of that, um, reasons to turn on your camera. I've noticed that for the last two sessions, we really haven't had that much camera engagement. So I made an effort to put these on here of why you should use your camera. It forces your attention to the screen. It's really easy to get distracted, especially with a long event like this. So turning your camera on kind of forces you to be like, all right, I'm here, this is what I'm doing. And you obviously gave up your Saturday today, so you wanna be here, you know, make the most of it. And also for the presenters, your presence is really important to them. It's really hard to present to just a blank screen when you have nobody looking at you. And those verbal cues and um, different like, gestures that you see and might see the presenter might say, oh, I must be confusing people here. Maybe I need to slow down. Or it looks like everybody's zoning out. Maybe I can speed up this part and they're not very interested. So that's good, good to know. Um, and then make new connections, having your camera on, it shows confidence and you obviously you never know what's gonna happen when you step out of your comfort zone. You might meet someone new today that is the key to your success for upcoming seasons. If you're not gonna use your camera, there is a cop out. You can add a profile picture or maybe a picture that um, represents your um, identity. So if you're not sure how to do that, I quick put the instructions here. You just have to find your Zoom settings and click on your little initials and you should be able to change your picture. Um, earlier, we were using the annotate tool, so I don't know if we really need to practice this, but it's kind of a fun one, so maybe we will. We'll do a little icebreaker. What is your favorite winter activity? And if you don't have the option to use annotate, um, it looks like maybe Google Chromebooks didn't have it on there, then you can just put your answer in the chat. And I did allow for a free answer if yours is not included on here. I'm impressed with how many are say reading. 
I don't, I don't, maybe I should. I, I am too. <laughs> As a librarian, you're warming my heart right now. Megan, are you reading anything good right now? You know, I, there's, yeah, a lot though. <laughs> but there, <laughs> a lot, yeah. And that's the time to do it right now, especially with COVID. I feel like more than ever, I feel like I'm reading. I don't, maybe that's why it's so popular too. Could definitely be the case. My chat is hitting right now, so I can't see it. There's probably some good answers in it though. Oh, there it is. Pop back up. Magic. Oh, I watching like Celeste Christmas movies, watching Christmas no movies. shooting. That's good. <laughs> I like I Prescott. Like Anything skiing. outside. I also like skiing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll move on for this, but thank you everyone for participating. That's a good watching movies. Um, any questions about any of the tools that we're using today or participation or the alumni event or anything that was mentioned? Awesome. Here is our agenda for today. Um, we were supposed to have someone from the College of Science and Engineering with us today, but he was unable to make it last minute. So we are sad to not have him with us, but appreciate everything St. Cloud has done for Jumpstart nonetheless. Um, there are two sessions that I want to selfishly call out today. One is the diversity and inclusion session because we have uh, Megan Turok from Medtronic, subbing in for Shar, and Yoji graciously took on that great session. So join that if you're a mentor and interested in learning more about that. Um, and then also critical thinking. Daryl Unterrecker is known for this class, but he is not able to be with us. But Sean Kelly has taken over his critical thinking expertise um, since they're less Medtronic. So that will be a great session to hit as well, especially if you weren't able to make it in person last year. Hey, Matea. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Try and speak without the feedback. Hey, Matea. Can you just point out the, the message that was pre-recorded from Martha on uh, the main website there? That is my next slide here. All right. Jeff Martha, although he is not with us in person today, is a great sponsor of the FIRST Robotics program. Um, he is also leading the African Descent Network and has done so much for Medtronic and assumed our CEO position in April of this year. Um, he recorded a special video message for you that is posted on the event website. And also I'm putting the link in the chat right now. That'll take you right to the video. So as we break for the first round of sessions, please take the time to watch that special message from him. And then you should have um, a good 10 minutes here before our first session starts. So that you can take a break, get some coffee, wake yourself up and get ready to really engage in the next sessions. That is all I have for you. Thanks Thank you, you everyone. Enjoy your day. <laughs>